Hey, what's going on guys? Nick from Practically Tactical here, and of course, joined by Greg. Uh, we're uh, one of our few uh, moments here. <laughs> yeah, America. America. <laughs> one of our few times uh, a year here that uh, we were able to get together. So, uh, for those that uh, maybe haven't watched the show or haven't caught when Greg's up been on the show, uh, he's now an EMT in uh, San Antonio area. And so we thought it'd be a really good time here to maybe uh, kill a few beers and talk about guns, wound channels, gunshot wounds, all that type of fun stuff. So Greg, uh, you've been an EMT now for like, what, a year, half a year or something like that? Yeah, I'm coming on about a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, for so a while now. Um, but I finished up paramedic, just about done, a few months out. So, but I've got some experience under my belt, so that's, that's what yeah. counts. Oh, San Antonio is such a friendly area. Yes. <laughs> such a beautiful, majestic culture of people. <laughs> it's a crock pot of wonder. Of happiness. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, um, and I, well, even based off one of your, one of your pictures from, from something you took care of, you've had an experience with a couple gunshot wounds. Yep. So, um, what so far, I don't know if it's been three or four different gunshot wound cases that you've been on. What's, what's yeah. been kind of your experiences with gunshot wounds? Um, there's a man. They've been they've, honestly they've been kind of all over the place. I was gonna point out real quick one of the cases I believe you wrote an article about. So I'm gonna tell people to check that one out too because oh. that was also an interesting article. Oh well, thank that you. That you wrote. Uh, that would be if you go to Practi For those that don't know, if you go visit practitactical.com, I actually publish uh, myself and I have other writers that actually write articles and publish. Uh, one I wrote was called 380 ACP yep. is no joke. One of the gunshots that you took care of. Uh, he had about 14 inches of penetration out of yep. a 380 ball, which that much penetration is no joke, depending on no matter what round. Yep. So, but you can check out that article and actually see pictures from one of the cases that you did, yep. uh, and check out that article right there. But, uh, but yeah. So, what's been your experiences mm -hmm. that yeah. case and a few others? I'll, I'll definitely be touching on some 380. Uh, I've seen kind <laughs> That's of. That's a very popular round in the game. It is. <laughs> I'll definitely be touching on quite a bit of 380. <laughs> uh, I've seen both spectrums from that one to. Not anything to just it, it just varies. I've Machetes. seen uh, <laughs> I've seen my fair share of uh, some penetrating trauma. So um, you know, a thing to think about is in the medical field we don't really can a gunshot wound is put, kind of put in the same category as you know like stabbings and stuff like that. Something that's going to penetrate your body. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you know you'll see we kind of break it down into uh, like a low low energy, medium energy, and then high energy. Uh, and there's a lot of more variables and factors that are going to play into how wounds form and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I mean, so if you think about just the basics of how energy is, you know, you can't, it, it can only change states, right? Um, and then I'm not going to get all scientific, but we all know if you double the mass, you double the energy. Mm -hmm. But if you double the velocity, then you quadruple the energy. So velocity plays a lot more into uh, wounds than particularly mass. It still has an effect, mm -hmm. you know. But um, it's but not necessarily the small bullet going really fast is going to do the most damage. Either. Yeah. There was uh, a DOD study in like 2004 that had a 223 and a 22 long rifle had the same amount of uh, initial penetration at 12 centimeters. There was no difference between the two in the first 12. So, and there's a lot of things at play that I think a lot of people don't think about. Um, but if you start out the, the far spectrum of low energy, where we're talking about like knives and stuff like that, or bottles, I've seen, you know, beer bottle stabbings, the classic <laughs> shank, <laughs> shank and a mosh pit, you know. They watched too many movies, they I think, do, didn't they? They do, because every time I try and do it, I, uh, I just break it in my hand. And it never <laughs> works out. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so interruption there from my child. So, uh, so low energy stabbings, knives, low energy stabbings, bottles. Yeah. People that watch Roadhouse way too much. Yes, <laughs> Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah. Roadhouse. 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 <laughs> so and uh, so low energy, which can still be no joke, depending on yeah. you know kind of where you get stabbed, especially knives. Like a lot, of, a lot. Of, um, if any of y'all ever you know take like some ninja knife stuff. Combatives. You know, yeah, combatives. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know a lot of places will teach to twist and stuff like that. So there can still be, you know, just because it's a stabbing, you don't just assume it's, you know, just a straight in clean wound. It can be just, it can be nasty and dirty too, depending on the length and depth and 
where your setup is, stuff like that. Type Which of blade? Can, do you, type of blade? Is a type of blade yeah, make a difference? Yeah, a type of blade could too. Okay. You know? So there's a lot of things and there's a, there's just a lot of variables and you know knives and then uh, you know caliber and stuff like that too that we can get into. And then you have your medium uh, energy, which is typically considered your handguns or you know uh, like lower velocity rounds stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Which you know I'll talk more about because uh, it's going to tie in also with high energy. High energy are going to be your rifle, rifle calibers stuff like that. And uh, so. We were talking before about mass and velocities and stuff like that, uh, and I think a lot of a lot of people always think about when you think about a wound is uh, you always think about like that clean entry wound and then that big massive uh, exit, exit wound. wound. That's yeah. what everybody thinks about, you know. And so, an interesting fact: <clears throat> when a bullet is fired, it creates you know that supersonic wave behind it. Yeah. Sound travels four times more fast in body tissue than it does in the air. Hmm. So, because think about it, we're made of mostly water. Yeah. So, right? But it's, it's really amplified, and so when it hits that body, it travels in front of the projectile, too. And uh, so when in there, a bullet strikes, you have that initial, that initial cavitation, which that, it yeah. just, you know, you'll go watch gelatin. Temporary, temporary cavitation. Okay, yeah, temporary cavitation. You can watch gelatin ones where they're, like, oh, you know, flailing, yeah. and there's this big gaping wound. But then it comes back down, you yeah. know? And then you see that tight... You know, the permanent one channel. The permanent, and that's that would be your permanent cavitation too. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where all the that's where the damage comes from. Mm -hmm. And um, so, obviously, depending on where that hits too. And the big thing I like I wanted to convey the most in this video is there is so many variables that go in when you shoot somebody when that round impacts someone. Don't think like it's just you know. I'll give you a case. We're, we'll go over an actual, this is my last shooting. Uh, two guys, altercation with a machete, one with a 380. Uh, they ended up grappling over two weapons. They ended up being, they ended up switching weapons. Weapons were swapped. And um, the one of the guys had shot the other guy from uh, the sheriff's office at about three feet away. This was with a 380, shot him three feet away, right in the forehead. I say that to you, right? I'm gonna say that to you too. I shoot you three feet away, right, just dead smack center right in the forehead. What do you think would happen? Go right through. Just dead, drop right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. Nope. Nope. Not it. The bullet actually, it did enter his skull. Uh, it was just at just enough oblique angle to where that just slight change in angle makes the entire difference mm -hmm. and the dispersion of energy. So instead of it just going straight through one hit or quitter, it's in, skimmed around the edge of his skull, exited the back. He was out of the hospital in like a week. Yeah. The other guy got a machete across the side of his face. He was, he was out the same way. Yeah. They both bought themselves a helicopter ride, though. <laughs> so, but that was one thing I really wanted to convey is it's not so cut and dry. You know, depending on where you get hit, if you shoot somebody in the abdomen, you know, is, that, is it going to be a hollow organ? Is it going to be a solid organ? Are we talking about muscles? Does it hit a bone? You know, if it hits a bone, then, you know, you're talking about more fragmentation of bullets, more, you know, damage. Does it change the trajectory, you know, so where it enters might not exit. And then dispersion of energy is, you know, yeah. a big deal of it, too. Uh, body armor body armor can play a lot into dispersion of energy, stuff like that. Well, so. and, and maybe while we're on the subject here, let's let's jump on that because uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of people... And I, and I think uh, like AR500 shows that their lead times on some of their products would be, uh, I think a lot of civilians are buying body armor for various different reasons. Uh, good on them. But what's, you know, whether it be ceramic plates or steel plates, um, you know, that could vary on what we're going to talk about next year. But, you know, just because you're wearing a steel, steel plate, it could make you bulletproof from the bullet. However, there are some other factors to be involved in, right? Yeah. You know, if you... Let's, I'm just going to use steel because I only have experience with steel plates, not ceramic. I'm, I think you probably yeah. only have ceramic yeah. plate experience. You know, um, when that bullet impacts and being stopped, all that energy is still, you know. It's still going somewhere. So basically, yeah. you blunt force trauma is still, yeah. could be a part of of, uh, of a shooting where if you're wearing body armor, right? Definitely. I mean, the, the energy is going to go somewhere. It's always just going to go from one form to another. So even wearing body armor, yeah, you might. You, you save yourself, possibly save yourself, you know, from the actual penetration, but that energy is still going to be transferred. Yeah. You know, 
And um, so you can still talk about, you know, uh, broken ribs. You can still talk about internal bleeding. Like I said, it just all depends on where you get hit and what the angle is and how far they are, how close they are. A lot of things. Um, I mean, granted, I'd rather take a hit and ball yeah. the armor than get, yeah. you know, shot. Don't get me wrong. But just because you wore that isn't the end all be all from, you know, yeah. you're not getting some, you're going to get some type of trauma. You could, I mean, there could be some like life dangerous consequences oh, with it. Couldn't there be still? Yeah, definitely. Even if it's I mean, a blood force trauma? Like I said, the whole point of this video is just to make people understand that there's more variables to it than it's not cut and dry. Yeah. You know, you know, maybe you get hit, you fracture a rib and that rib punctures your lung and you have yourself a, you know, a closed nemo or develops into a closed pneumothorax or something like that. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, that's a possibility. You yeah. know, I've seen crazier things, you know. Yeah. So you just don't you just don't sell anything short, you know. Expect the worst is what I would say. Okay. You know? So Well, I'm curious to and throw this at you here too. By the way, I need to mention uh Hey, at Brewing Company, Basque Soccer Lager is great stuff. Since we're out here in Idaho, we're both Basque, by the way. Nice hand modeling. Uh, very good beer. <clears throat> we may or may not have frozen these on accident to make them a little flat, but still doing the job. Still doing the job. But so, you know, the big thing in the firearms industry right now would be like, you know, ballistics debate of, you know, 40, 45, 9 mil. Um, I'm obviously in the 9 mil camp. Uh, you know, the FBI switching back to 9 millimeters. They literally say there's no difference between... 9, 40, yeah. 45. Actually, in their report, they talked about how uh, 9 when we were actually outperformed. But uh, kind of something we talked about before this was, in your book, it doesn't deal so much with calibers. It just talks about the shots. So, you know, from from everything that's in your book of what you've studied or read or experienced, you know, there's not a real tremendous amount of differences, handguns I'm talking about, um, based on anything you've read or experienced, right? Yeah, no, I mean, um, I can think of um, a few cases off the top of my mind. Um, most I've dealt in so far, I've been 380, but I have, ha I've had dealt in some nine millimeter. And, um, like I said, you know, if you go check out that article you, and you can check out, there's a picture of the wound where, uh, he was cleaning it and he shot himself, you know, right here in the wrist and then it traveled out and came out, you know, next to his elbow. Didn't hit any bone, nothing like that. It was just, a you know, soft tissue, but that's still... A lot of penetration yeah. and then I've seen a 380 that skims around the skull yeah you know from three feet away so yeah. uh, I've seen a nine millimeter that one shot went through both thighs dang yeah girlfriend chain get put in the turn on an Xbox and guy cleaning his nine mil and shoots it through both thighs didn't hit any bone I mean clean entry clean exit clean entry clean exit Wow just through both you know cut and dry no bone I think that she actually caught a little bit of fragmentation, but nothing, nothing too. Uh, crazy. Was that ball ammo? Yeah, yeah. There's all these people wearing the ball <laughs> ammo, man. <laughs> you know, so it's it's just crazy, you know. But had that hit her femur, that could be a completely different. Yeah. You know that would have changed the game and just just a fraction of hair or different at an angle, and yeah. that's a game changer. That could be that could be what does you in or something, you know, yeah. or you know rehabilitation for a year. So there's just a lot, but um, now generally too, something we talk about, uh, we mentioned on the show a bunch of times is handguns wound, shotguns rifles kill. Not saying that handguns aren't deadly, yeah, uh, but you know I think it's something along the lines. If you get shot with a handgun, you have like a three percent chance of dying, or know, something along the lines of that. What's what's been your experience or studies or kind of on on the handgun versus like rifle shotgun type of stuff? Um, you know, so, so far I haven't had a deal in any rifle shotgun cases yet. I'm sure that day's coming. Um, but I know, uh, our most recent shooting that we did have was, uh, I'm not exactly sure on the caliber, but it was a guy that had been shot just dead center of his face and the bullet actually just managed to exit a C1, C2 and just severed his respiratory and so he died. Um, you know, but it's it's still you know it's a bullet it's yeah. traveling through your body it's, it's gonna depend on what it hits um shotguns i mean uh you can start talking about you know different types of ammunition like uh you know bird or double op buck uh, if you're really interested in a lot of these wounds you can just google it you yeah. can image the wounds and you can kind of see what they're capable of uh, 
I can't really speak out of experience with those. Okay. Um, definitely a lot of pistols, though. Pistol calibers, it's, it's, it comes down to that variable of luck or yeah. luck or not luck. You know, um, even different types of rounds, like hollow point. I haven't had to deal any hollow points yet. Uh, so it's why a lot of people care. Why would they? <laughs> God, people. But obviously, hollow points can create a lot more damage. Yeah. Uh, depending on how close the bullet's fired, you know, uh, you know, if you've ever shot like a water jug or something like that, and you know, at the bottom, oh, you know, cool, look at all the pieces. That too, that fragmentation, you know, uh, you might not get as deeper penetration, but the fact that you affected more tissue in that area that weakens all that tissue, you know, might mean more cavitation. Yeah. So a bolt that's purposely designed or you know accidentally fragments can cause a bigger cavitation too. So there's there's just a lot that plays into it. So okay. um so any, anything we kind of moved ourselves into the 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 high energy impact or high energy area there. So anything else to cover more in that area of uh... I mean high higher energy so we're talking about, you know, more velocity, more velocity, more you're talking more uh, quadruple energy. Yeah. Quadrupled energy. So you're talking more, you know. <laughs> yeah. So and then, I mean, the mass still plays into that, but yeah. you, it's more about velocity than anything else. If you actually just look up the equation, I'm not going to recite it because I'll probably mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about 50 BMG hitting someone at five yards. <laughs> you know, it probably depends on where it hits you. You'll die. <laughs> it could miss you. It could miss you, and I think you still die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, um, you know... I think we covered all your gunshot stories there. I mean, um, and, you know, again, we're just talking about just kind of general information, chat, hanging out about gunshot wounds. You know, if, if there's anything you want to, again, you already mentioned, you know, there's, it depends. It yeah, depends. it depends. Uh, but, it, you know, is there anything else you want to tell people kind of about gunshot wounds or gunshots or, you know, any, anything along this, this kind of line of what we're discussing? Uh, yeah, properly clear your weapons before cleaning them. That should be given for everybody out there, I hope. Yeah, you would think. You think? You would think. I wouldn't have seen half my gunshot wounds if they just didn't clear them. Yeah. You know. So that's the biggest advice. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Yes. <laughs> Number one rule. Number one rule. Don't yeah. be stupid. Don't be stupid because you don't look cool if you're stupid. That's right. Yeah. I lived my life off three rules. Rule number one: always look cool. Rule number two, know what you're talking about. Rule number three, if you don't know what you're talking about, look cool. Yeah. If you don't clear and shoot somebody on accident, you don't look cool. Or if you shoot yourself. Or you don't shoot look, yourself, you really don't, don't, don't look cool. cool. You really don't look cool, especially if that's the second time you've done it the same way. Oh, really? <laughs> was one of the dudes the second time? Uh, it was uh, one you wrote the article about, actually. It was the second <laughs> time he shot himself. So. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. So... <laughs> Was he laughing about it at least? Uh, his, I think he wanted to, but his girlfriend or wife, whoever it was, was not happy about it. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. Jeez. <laughs> when are we going to learn? When are we going to learn? Oh, man. Well, I guess we're going to wrap it up here, guys. Unless, Greg, you got anything else you want to throw here in at the end? So. America. That's right. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching this video. Hope you learned a little bit. Again, if you got any questions, please put them down below. Uh, maybe Greg will check the comments there and respond to any questions that you guys might have. Uh, if you guys have any for me or anything you want me to pass along to Greg, make sure you guys put it down below. And so uh, we'll have to get you back on the show, Greg, and maybe uh, do maybe an actual outlined uh, discussion on this sometime maybe. That'd be fun. And, uh, but, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. So until next time, guys, take care. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Roadhouse.